What are some of the stupidest, like worst things that you could do as an apprentice? All right, the first thing that you could do, the worst thing, is to not know where the wider stretcher is. I'm gonna let y'all figure that one out. The second worst thing that you could do is to sit down on your butt. One thing that drives me up a wall is when somebody thinks like they're, it's cool to just work slow, not like, hey, I'm trying to be really meticulous and neat and make sure everything's good, but just to like, hey guys, what's going on today? Hey, yeah, I'm so like, I'm gonna work on this switch right here. Like lackadaisically, just chilling. <laughs> we don't just chilling in the trades. We work. So you need to be working quickly, not so quickly that you're breaking stuff and like dropping tools and everything. There's a, there's gears to this whole thing. The best electricians out there are the ones that can shift gears. They understand when it's time to downshift, go a little bit slower and things need to be meticulous. We need to like, um, we're in an environment where we can't break anything. And like this job has enough money in it that like taking our time and going extra slow makes sense. And then there's times where you need to shift it and go faster and understand like, we don't have as much money into this and we have a certain amount of hours that we have to hit. Still do clean, good work, but we need to pick up our pace. We can't just be screwing around on this kind of a job. So a good electrician knows when to shift, but a bad helper is a helper that just gets to a job and sits on the ground and thinks like it's okay to take 12 minutes to put a plug in. They should take three minutes, three minutes, that's it. I'm sorry, receptacle, not plug. Oh, I can hear the comments already going. Mad little fingers. Okay, so don't sit down. Like you, you should run up, kneel down, get a good set of knee pads. Oh, by the way, on the knee pads, thank you Klein for sponsoring this. Klein has like a whole bunch of knee pads actually, like tons of different variations for different reasons why you would use them. You could wear the lightweight gel knee pads. Um, these are like a foamy kind of cushion. They're really comfortable. You could get the hinged knee pads, which are uh, pretty much the same thing, but they've got this hinge part at the top that kind of folds over the top of your knee. Super comfortable. You could use the heavy duty hinged knee pads, which these things look like something a stormtrooper would wear. They're super comfortable. They support your whole upper leg and your bottom leg. And they've got like a Velcro-y strap that goes around your leg. And they have a tightenable, like secure strap that hooks on or snaps in place. You could wear the lightweight knee pad sleeves. These things are cool because you could wear them if you had shorts on or you could wear them if you have pants on, they slide over your pants. It's a way for your knee pads to actually be closer to your knee so there's not as much shifting around. Or you could wear the heavy duty version of these knee pad sleeves. They have a little bit extra padding on in, in the side of them and the fabric that they're made out of is a little bit more sturdy. And one cool thing about the knee pad sleeves is with both of them, you can wear them under or over your pant leg. So go out and get yourself some knee pads. Now, the next thing that you can do to really piss off the journeyman and masters around you is standing around. So like sitting is bad, but also standing is bad. You need to kind of levitate a little bit. <laughs> no, dude, what pisses me off more than anything is to see somebody just standing there, just chilling and watching while there's somebody else right next to him, sweating and just digging and working. And this person's sitting there just kind of like laughing. They pull their phone out, they're messing around on their phone. Work, dude, like you're there to get paid. You're there being paid to work. You're not just being paid to like be lazy and watch other people work. This laziness thing, I don't know if you can tell, like this is a nerve with me is just seeing people be lazy. It's different to be continuously working and you just work slow. I know people like that, but that's not bad. You're at least working, but like just standing around, not doing anything. And if you don't know what to do, I get it as like a new apprentice. A lot of times you just like don't understand what to do. So you don't want to do anything, but just standing there is not the right thing. Even if it's like first thing in the morning and everybody's cleaning the shop and putting things away and you notice one of these things ain't like the other and it's you. You're just the one standing there and everybody else is doing stuff. Don't be the guy that just stands there or the girl that just stands there. 
ask somebody, ask another apprentice, ask another journeyman, ask the master if you're not, if you're too intimidated, like ask anybody, just be like, dude, I don't, I, you're I'm paying me to be here right now. What can I do? And if you don't know anything else to do, grab a broom. Seriously, every job site, residential, commercial, doesn't matter if you're at the shop, if you're like in the car, you don't know what to do. Grab like a little mini broom and start sweeping the dash off. No, you're not gonna piss anybody off by like cleaning things. It's always necessary. If you're like looking through material bins, there's probably stuff that's in places it shouldn't be. So like, I don't know, just start kind of like moving things around that you think might need to be there. Or ask your journeyman, hey dude, is there anything that you need me to stock in the truck? Are we low on wire nuts? He might be like, I don't know, man, go look. And then you go up there and you're like, oh yeah, we don't have any wire nuts. So like start doing stuff. And I know it can be uncomfortable at first, but just don't stand there and not do anything. Okay, the next thing that I can't stand is people on their phones. Y'all youngsters, now look, this ain't a like, get off the screens, you got too much screen time, because like you're a parent yelling at a kid. I get your guys' culture is like way different. You guys grew up in screens. That's not what I'm talking about. When you're at work, you're being paid to do a thing. You're not being paid to sit on your phone and like go hide in a different room because you're done with your thing and you just want to sit on Discord and like watch streaming videos of Roblox. It's not the time to do it, okay? One thing that the generation below me, I will call it my son's generation, although my son's actually a really hard worker and a lot of his friends are too. I might just be like being a meanie right now unnecessarily, but I see it time and time again. I see tons of people on their phones and it's not even just the younger generations. There's some people too that like are my age and I'll look across the job site and they don't know that I'm there and I roll up to check how their job's doing and I see them through a window and they got their hand on a ladder and they're just scrolling Facebook. And I know because I'm friends with them on Facebook and I can see all their stupid notifications. Bing, bing, bloop, 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 bloop. Get off your phone. Oh my God, it pisses me off more than anything in the world. So there's a time, right? Wifey calls you, you got your like morning call with her. Tell her to call you before the day starts. Tell her to call you at like break time. Tell her to call you at lunchtime. <laughs> you don't need to answer every text that comes through your phone right away either. Like a lot of justifications are like, oh, well, my dad might text me and I need to be, you know, get back to him. Dude, your dad can wait. If it's not an emergency, and here's the thing, emergencies come up, like obviously every once in a while there's an emergency and you need to like get on your phone, that's fine, but tell the people you're working with like, bro, Today my dad's in the hospital. I need to like be by my phone because you know, like I just need to, or like my wife is about to go into labor. So like I might be on my phone a lot today. Sorry if I'm distracted, I'm here, but I just need today as like a weird day where I never do this again, this is the day that I need to do it. That's acceptable, but it's the every day, all the time, are you constantly on your phone all the time? That irritates, it's not even just me, it irritates everybody like my age and older and we're the bosses. <laughs> so stay off your phone, dude. Seriously, leave it in the truck. If you have a severe problem with it where you're constantly like grabbing every time it vibrates or dings or anything and you're like compulsion problems level of like paranoid about your phone, keep it in the truck. Seriously, you can go check on it every once in a while, every like two hours, just go <laughs> check and make sure everything's fine. But most people don't have enough problems going on in their life where they really need to. They're just doing it out of boredom. So don't be that person. You're going to piss so many people off. All right, number four, something that really gets under people's nerves that if you're an apprentice and you do this, you're not going to last long or you're just going to piss a lot of people off. Stop pretending that you know how to do things when you don't. There's this look in an apprentice's eyes when I'm telling them like, all right, so do you know how to land these wires on a breaker? Do you know how to like rip out wires and get everything set up on breakers? And they look at me and they're like, yeah, 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 I know. And I'm like, are you sure you know? Like, uh, you know, like to run this over here? And they're like, yeah, 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 I got it. <sighs> <laughs> Nothing makes me want to throw a hammer at somebody more than yeah, 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 I got it. Oh my God. Gets on my nerves. Because when they say yeah, 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 I got it, I know that there's no reason for them to say that other than they're feeling like they need to overcompensate for a inadequacy in some way. They want me to know that they know something. That's the only reason that you, yeah, 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 I got it. It's because you don't want me to keep talking as if you don't got it 
You just want me to know that you got it. And that's not necessary. I know you don't know things. I'm a master electrician. I watch you work every day. You're Mr. Apprentice four months on the job. You don't know anything. You're not gonna impress anybody for a really, really long time. And that's okay. Stop pretending that you know stuff. The best thing that you can do when you're new, and I would say probably the first two years of you doing this, is just when somebody's explaining something to you or just shake your head and be like, cool, all right, we'll do. Act like you don't know. Actually, when you do things, this is even a better test of like your emotional maturity. When you already know something and somebody's telling you, instead of feeling like, oh, I gotta let them know that I know, so I've gotta say something about this. <laughs> just practice being humble and just being like, cool, okay, all right, I got you. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, cool. That's it. You, like that, you saying that is you acknowledging that I just told you something, I told you a specific thing, the way I want you to do it, and the only thing I want you to do is just go do it that way. You know, like I don't need any rebuttal. I don't need to be like, well, yeah, I was gonna do it that way. Yeah, yeah, I was already gonna do it. Or like, oh, I think we should do it a different way. It's like, no, 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 no you're not there yet. Once we get to a certain point where I'm like, yo, uh, what do you think we should be doing? Or if I'm doing something and like you've been around the block around you know, enough so that like I know that you know what you're talking about and you say something, I'm gonna be like, oh, dude, that's a great idea. Like, absolutely. But just, it's it's the like, it's not even asking questions or like talking too much. That's not what I'm talking about. It's the obvious you don't know what you're talking about and you wanna pretend like you do know what you're talking about. So you just say something like, yeah, I got it. And then you go do the thing and you completely mess it up because you actually didn't know and you actually weren't listening. Or the other part of this is when somebody tells you something and they're like, do you understand? And you're like, yes, I understand. Wait and say, uh, I don't remember anything he just said. And then you get over there, you're like, I'm just gonna get over here and try to figure it out. Okay, he said something about a red wire. Damn it, there's no red wires here. Uh, I don't wanna go ask him again, so I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just gonna like try to do this. And then you do it, and then I come back after you've been there for an hour, and I told you to literally just go put a wire knot on a black wire. <laughs> you know? I'm gonna come back and be super pissed because you burned an hour. We just paid you an hour to do something that I just told you, and you said you knew, but you didn't know. All right, the last thing, this is definitely not the last thing. I just have to end this. This is, I don't know, 17 minutes now of me yelling at apprentices. I love you, apprentices. Just sometimes, there's just, you know? The last thing though, last thing we're gonna talk about, there's this thing that happens when an apprentice knows where a tool is in a van or a truck. And they're like, I need this tool to go do this thing. So I'm gonna go get it. Beep, 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 beep. Goes over, grabs thing out of truck, takes it. Beep, 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 beep. Goes out to start doing work. And then goes home at the end of the day with the thing still in their bag. And then the next day they're on a different truck and that journeyman needs that thing, and they go in there and they're like, what the, who took my thing? Because you didn't say anything about it, you just went and took the thing. And now you have the thing, and now you're like, oh God, I don't want him to know that I have the thing, so I'm gonna throw it in the pool and pretend I don't have the thing. Don't do that. I mean, like, that's the worst case. But even when you text your helper, you're like, bro, do you got the thing? And then like two hours of silence because they don't want to say anything. They don't want to get yelled at. And then they're like, finally, yeah, I got the thing. Oh my God, that irritates me. At least say something like to the journeyman, you can go grab the thing. Some journeymen are not going to want you to. Some are okay, go grab the thing. And as you're walking by, be like, bro, got the thing. And they're like, cool, put it back in the truck when you're done. And even if you don't, at least maybe when they're in the truck on the way home, they can be like, yo, did you put the thing back? And then you're like, oh crap, hold on a second. Put the thing back. <laughs> I know I'm kind of feisty today, but these are, these things irritate the living hell out of me. If you can't tell, like really irritate me. So, um, a lot of my stuff. And the worst thing is when you're running a job and everybody knows, hey, master electrician, Dusty's got all the cool tools because they all, all these people give them all these cool tools. So like six people go in and out of your vehicle and you don't know who has anything and then none of them give them back. Or somebody puts things in a weird place in a glove box when they took it out of a bag behind your seat and you just don't know where any of your stuff is. So please, dude, 
either tell somebody if you're using their tools, and this goes for like other apprentices too. If you're going over to somebody's bag and you're like, oh dude, there's a thing that I need. Yell at them across the job and be like, bro, can I use the thing? And they're like, no, you never give things back. Don't use my thing. Then you know like the next person, hey bro, can I use your thing? Yeah, I don't care. Cool, but like let people know. And one better yet, put stuff back. It's like, it's like the easiest thing because you went doo -doo 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 to get it. So just go doo -doo 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 and put it back. Be respectful. Like this stuff costs money. A lot of people have to pay like hundreds of dollars for stuff. Or the another thing is like, you go take thing and you bring it and you put it on top of wall. And then you go home at the end of the day and it's on top of wall still. And then Mr. Plumber's like, whoa, that fancy Milwaukee tool up there. You ain't mine. So apprentices, those are my five inalienable things that you can do to really like royally get a Spartan kick to the chest poof, at lunchtime. Um, so be kind, rewind, think about what you're doing out there. You're getting paid to do some stuff. Take this stuff seriously. Respect people, be humble, be a student, ask lots of questions, work as hard as you can work every day. Always try to find the line where you're working fast enough that you're being efficient, but you're doing the best, cleanest possible work that you can do. And those two things, it's like a moving target. It's this wrestling match where you realize the faster you work, the sloppier your workmanship is. So you kind of have to back it off because you need to make sure that there's a certain quality. So you're battling the slowness, but then you got a journeyman over there that's yelling at you like, bro, what's taking you so long? So you're like, okay. So you're kind of like balancing this thing, but don't just stick on one side or the other side. Like always try to find that point. And then as you're going through your career, you're gonna get better and better at this. You're going to become somebody, the best electricians out there, I swear to God, the best ones out there can outthink stuff so they don't have to work. They, they like think of all the problems ahead of time. They save so much time on a job site because they're able to shift gears. They know what to do, where to place people, how fast they need to go and how neat they need to be to make this profitable. Because it's not just about, hey, do the cleanest work you ever can so we can put this on Instagram. That doesn't always matter. And it's not always like, work as fast as you can so we can get all of this stuff done. That doesn't always matter either. Profitability to a company matters. That's why you're there. That's why they pay you all this money for your license. It's so that you can profit the company. So the best way to do that is to work fast enough and clean enough so that you have a killer reputation. You're not out here wasting people's money because you're taking so much time that you have to quote a four hour job to, to be 24 hours. You know, you're just taking money unnecessarily where another company could have done it in four hours and done it cheap. But you're also doing such clean work that it's undeniable your quality. Those are the best things because you're gonna keep getting more and more and more work. Anybody's gonna want you on their truck constantly um, and you wanna be the person that everybody wants around you. I trust you, you're gonna get the best work, best opportunities, people are gonna stand up for you. You're gonna have pay advances, people, you're never gonna lose your job because people don't wanna lose you, like you're such an asset. But if you're the person standing around, just not doing anything, person on their phone, person sitting down when they get up to stuff, instead of doing a receptacle in three minutes, you're doing it in 12 minutes. If you're this, person that you're doing all this thing, you're you're gonna be the person that everybody's like, God, get them off my truck, I don't want them. And after enough people that that happens, you're gone. So be the opposite, be the person that puts themselves into every single thing always, always trying to learn, always trying to know more. Always like um, when they don't know something is asking more questions and fully making sure they really understand it. I would rather you spend more time making me know that you don't know something than make me think that you do and you screw our whole day up. Anyways, enough ranting at you. I love you crazy people. If you wanna watch another video on like what it means to be a journeyman, check this out. This is my other channel, Journeyman Master. Um, if you want to see what it's like to be a good follower, I think this is a really good video here. All right, love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.